What I'm going to do in this video is show you a square item and its options, variations, modifiers, those three things and how they interact with each other, how they're related, and how they're not related. This can be an, a confusing topic, so I want to make it very clear for you in your mind so that you can move forward with confidence. Firstly, what we'll do is take a look at what's related and what's not. So we have two different things here, not three. We have two things. So we have options, which exist inside of option sets, and then those are used to create variations. So yes, this is sort of two separate things, but they're related. That's why they're in this little box. Next, we have modifiers and modifier sets. So modifiers exist inside modifier sets. Now, these are the two concepts. The options and variations are related, and they're separate from modifiers. Now I'll describe them in a little bit more detail. So first, a variation is created from options and multiplied across all the option sets that you select, which I'll describe in just a moment. Secondly, we have modifiers, which are separate and are applied to the item or the variation during shopping, checkout, during ordering, whatever it is that you're doing, depending if you're using it for a restaurant or retail. Now, variations are unique in that they exist inside the item, so they're part of the item anatomy. They are primarily used for retail, and those are the pr two key things. And then they have a unique SKU, they have a unique price, they have unique inventory. So it's sort of like a sub item inside the item that you can have another picture on, that you can let people select, of course, but it has its own SKU, its own price, it has certain information that's unique about it. Now modifiers are unique in that they can be applied to multiple items without actually modifying the item in the back end. Now this is primarily used for restaurants and you'll see why in just a minute. Now modifiers can be free or can add to the price of the item and they are either in or out of stock. There's no stock quantity, but if you at your restaurant run out of tomatoes to put on burgers, you can mark it as out of stock and make it not selectable. Now I'll show you an item and how options, option sets, and variations work together. So say we have an option set called size, and that has three different options inside of it, small, medium, and large. Maybe it's t-shirts, for instance. And then we have another option set called color, and that has three options inside of it, red, green, and blue. We have our option sets and our options, and what happens here is, by the lineup, you probably already know what's gonna happen, each of these creates a variation when they intersect. So when size small intersects with color red, that creates a red t-shirt in small size. We have red medium red large, green small, green medium, green large. So we have all of these and then we have blue. So we have all of these multiplied across. This is what options does. This is the key thing that options, options sets, that's what it does is it multiplies across to create your variations which have their unique SKUs and prices and can be tracked individually. Now, there is a step in the dashboard, and I'll show you all of this in just a second. There's a step in the dashboard where you can individually remove a variation. So let me show you that again. So we have it multiplied across, but then there's a certain step where you can remove a particular variation without changing the option sets. So you might want to preset your option sets with your sizes and colors and whatnot. And then when you're creating an item, you can remove a particular variation without changing the option set that you sort of used as the template to multiply out all the variations. Let me show you this 
in the Square dashboard. We're going to do this by creating a new item. So we'll go into our dashboard, create an item. I'll just call this t-shirt and then we're going to go down straight to options. I do have a video going over every one of these describing exactly what they do, but I'm just going to focus on options, option sets, and then later modifiers. So what we'll do is we'll click add options. We'll add our color. We have to create a new one, so we'll just add color and then we'll do create new. And then I'm going to add our three different colors, red, green, blue. And then I'm going to add another option set. We'll call it size. We'll see if it exists. It doesn't. I want to keep things consistent. I'm pressing enter when you don't see me click the thing that's highlighted blue. I'm just pressing enter, by the way. Next, we'll go to size options. So see how the option set name is size and then our options inside the option set is small, medium, large. And then what we're going to do is click next. Now that's what I was just talking about is where you can remove one particular variation. So I'm going to remove green large right here. So we'll find green, large, we're going to remove it. I'm going to mirror the PowerPoint as much as possible. So what all of this did, and I did it very quickly, so feel free to go back. It's hard to understand the first time. Is I have, just like in that PowerPoint slide, we have red small, red medium, red large. Just like that, green small, medium, blue small, medium, large. So we have all of those. I unchecked green, large. Now we're going to do create eight variations. And what this will do is it creates our variations right there. Now you can create variations like individually and stuff, but I'm doing it in the most common way, most efficient way is to use the option sets as intended. So now what we can do is Square automatically, if you have Square Ferrito Plus, generates a SKU for it. But we can edit this to our own structure. We can, if there's a vendor code that we want to use here, we can use it there, no problem. Or if it has a UPC, we can put it in right here. Now these all have a variation name. You can associate photos. So what will happen is if you upload photos right here, then it'll give you the options to select from your photos that are on the item already. And then you enter your price, weight, unit cost. Now these might all be the same, but it's really powerful if you have different ones. Now you do the stock receiving and everything, but that's for another video. So this is what variations do with, with option sets, with options. That's how it's in the square dashboard and the conceptual level. Now, I'm going to show you next the modifier. So I'll X out of this, discard the changes, and we'll go back to the slides. So now what I'm going to show you is how the modifiers interact with an item. So we have three things that interact with each other. We have the modifier set, a modifier individually, which exists inside the modifier set, and then we have the item. So say we have a modifier set called condiments, and there's three items on it, barbecue, ranch, buffalo. And then we have another modifier set called sides. And on that, we have salad, fries, and tots, which is, of course, tater tots. And then in this scenario, we have three different items. We have cheeseburger, fish sandwich, and wings. Now, think about in comparison to the variations we just talked about. The cheeseburger, the fish sandwich, and the wings are completely and utterly unrelated. You don't want to create one item that's food and then create variations of it that's cheeseburger, fish sandwich, wings. That's not helpful to the customer. 
you could use that in a food setting, the variations that is, you could use those in a food setting if maybe you had a steak and you want multiple size options, maybe you have a burger and you have a quarter pound and a half pound and if it's very closely related then you can use the variation but if it's not so related then that's where the modifiers come in and just like I talked about modifiers are primarily not exclusively but primarily used in a food setting and variations are primarily not exclusively but primarily used in a retail setting so I'll continue with this, this example we have our three items cheeseburger fish sandwich wings and we have our modifier sets with their modifiers these modifier sets would be connected to the item but they don't change the actual item in the system so it's connected but it doesn't actually modify the item itself in the back end it only shows up in the front end when the customer is placing an online order when wait staff is taking order at the table or doing it after they've written it down preferably of course at the table more efficient but that will only show up when an order is being placed it will not show up in the back end as much not the same way as the variations show up with their separate information so the way this will display on the front end or in the back end rather so what you do in the back end is you connect it that's what this little arrow is it's connected to it and you can do some more advanced stuff with it but that's again that's for another video so you can connect it and then on the front end it displays it sort of like this you have condiments and then you can select what you want and you can pre-select and set prices and do all this stuff I'll show you a little bit about that in just a moment but we have our condiments and that displays our checkboxes with the different options and then what we can do is we can add another one so we can connect both condiments and sides to the same item but it doesn't have to get multiplied across like the variations so we can have one item and then the customer selects all of these different options but it doesn't clutter up the back end with a bunch of different variations because it's a modifier so we connect the sides right and that displays much the same but different options so we will select our condiment maybe we want barbecue sauce on our burger maybe we want a side salad with it or we want our fries so we can select that we can let them select multiple only select one make them select one there's a lot of options there but again another video now next we'll connect just sides to our fish sandwich and that just puts sides on the fish sandwich if we just want to connect the condiments to the wings then that's what we do so now what I'll do is I'll show you this in the square dashboard so we'll head over here I have an item here called the Sixth Street Grill which is a sandwich and you'll notice I have it on the front end it displays as eight dollars and ninety five cents but in the back end somehow it displays as two dollars and twenty cents so I'll write that down I already did write that down in my calculator for later I'll show you how this all works in just a moment so what we can do is we'll go down past our options and variations and all of this down to our modifiers and we have four modifier sets we have condiments mini sides sandwich toppings and sides now I'm not going to show you anything in condiments because it's really not doing anything it's just letting them select but we're going to go into mini sides and see what's going on here now you start to see the power of the modifiers you can require to select one and I don't have a maximum but you can put a maximum if you want I have them required to select one and then what we do is we pre-select something that goes with it we pre-select our coleslaw or garlic toast whatever but what this is doing is it's adding it to the price that's shown on the front end. So I'm going to go back to my calculator and add my 1.5. Okay, now we're up to $3.70, right? Now I'm going to just X out of this. I'm not going to make any changes, but I'm going to show you how this functions. 
Now we'll go back to our modifiers and go to sandwich toppings. We'll customize it and you'll see that there's no minimum or maximum but to make this the interesting sandwich that it is we're pre-selecting fig jam, mixed greens, and sautéed apples each of which have a price. So let's add that to our running total. We'll add 0 0.5, 0 0.5, and add 0 0.75. Now you're starting to see where this is coming from. So we've pre-selected three things. We don't have a minimum or a maximum on here. But then I'm going to X out of this. So then we'll go back down to our modifiers, to our sides. And then we have required one, and we have one pre-selected, and they're 350 each except for these more expensive premium sides. So then this will round out our price. So we add our 3.5, and now we have that 895 that we're seeing on the front end. So the front end price displays it inclusive of what's pre-selected. So the way that I've set up this account, and it is a test account, so you can't go to 9600 Escarpment Boulevard and go to Appaloosa's and get a Sixth Street Grill. But the way I've set up this account is so that everything is modular. And you don't have to do this in your restaurant, but that's the power of the modifiers is you can do everything modular, let people unselect, select, and you can charge them for everything, and you can create this creative structure so that it shows them if they just want to order a straight up 6th Street Grill as it comes, they can click on it, and then they can just, boom, add to order. But if they want to customize it, they can grab some barbecue sauce. They can not get coleslaw. That does change the price, but that's why we've required them to select one because we don't want to lose money on this and let them just get the bare bones thing that we don't make any money on. So they can switch this though if they want to garlic toast. That brings it back to 895. But we also don't want to prevent them if they also want just a few french fries, they can add that too. Or if they want two different sides, they can get the default and they also maybe want the broccoli medley. We can let them get that and then we can let them change their toppings. But what this does is it makes the online order experience very, very accessible. And it allows them to select according to their food allergies, their preferences. But we had to have those minimums in because we don't want to lose money. So this is sort of how the modifiers work. We can set minimums, maximums, pre-select, and set prices. Now the prices are not per item, but the pre-selection is per item, and the minimum and maximum is per item. So you can change that according to each item, but then have the same size, the same toppings for all of your different items. Be sure to like and subscribe, email learn at appaloosa.tech, comment below. We're happy to answer questions. If you want us to implement this in your restaurant, give us a call. Have a great day.